For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, the anointed Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5. This verse is the one that helps you understand why all other religions hate Christianity. You don't need a mediator between you and God. Not Mary, not a pope, not a government. There are only two religions on earth, and I hope you comprehend this well. Cain's and Abel's. It's Jesus plus nothing, minus nothing. When you see a man anointed by God, like, well, I'm not going to mention the name here, but, or like King Jehu, to deal with Baal worshippers worldwide, you love him or you hate him. There's no in-between. If the world loves you, that's your sign. If the world hates you, no, it hated him first. The world mentioned in the Bible usually is talking about the world system under Hasatan, the pig, Lucifer. Paul was your preacher to the Gentiles. People never learn for themselves. Praying to anyone but God is paganism, not to angels, Mary, or anything else. In fact, one of the angels was very specific about don't worship me. Angels are not to be worshipped. Angels are, are um, the darlings of heaven for God, but we are the darlings of God for earth. And he wants us back. God wants us back. And he is doing everything in super quick time to get us back into the kingdom, to get us back to heaven in the rapture. God is coming for us. He is coming for us. I keep saying this because people need to hear this. You know, encourage one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven to come and pick us up. Jesus didn't become God. He was God when he came. He was God at the foundation of the world. He submitted himself to the, to the pain of being a human, to the horror, to the humiliation of being a human so that he could die for us. He could experience the same level of pain and suffering. He was God at the foundation of the world. If that doesn't fit or make sense to you, if you've never seen yourself as lost and asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, you can't say you are a Christian. That word gets thrown around a lot, but there are not many real Christians. You need to choose when God knocks on your heart and he knocks on every heart. If you will bend your heart to God, see yourself as a sinner and ask God to forgive you or to forgive you of your sin, he will save you. God died so he could be able to give you the opportunity to be right with him because only perfect lives forever with him and none of us are. Every knee that bows to God has their name sealed in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. I've done that so many times. I kneel and kneel and kneel, sometimes in the shower, sometimes, I mean, every single night, every, you know, every day uh, at my bed kneel and proclaim him God and give him glory. Every knee that bows to God has their name sealed in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. No man or woman can blot your name and God's spirit moves in your heart as a down payment of the eternal life to come. Not based on your works, not being a good boy or a good girl, lest any man or woman should boast. It's God's spirit that does the changing in you every day, in me every day, daily now. He will save you right where you are if you mean business with God. Pray this prayer if God is knocking on your heart. Dear God, I know I'm not perfect and I know I'm a sinner. I know you sent Jesus to take my place, my place, because mankind rebelled against you. I was part of that rebellion and I should have paid a very hefty price, but you paid it on my behalf and I thank you, Father. Please forgive me and move me into, and please forgive me and move, you come into my heart. I give you my life and will serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that and you really meant it with all your heart and you'll do everything in your power now not to go out and re-sin again, even though that can happen, we understand that. God saved you and the angels in heaven actually are rejoicing over your decision. So, let me know if you prayed that prayer and where you're from. 
and you are now considered to be a saint. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Walk in victory because you have adoption to sonship, as we're told in the Bible. All sinners that get saved are saints, none above another, lest any man or woman should boast. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm just saying, I would like you today to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you haven't given your life, you're missing out. You're missing out on probably the most important part of your existence. The very reason, the very essence of why you are here. I'm going to read you something else. The angels that fell try to copy God. That's why they had their own children. The giants we never speak of. And Nephilim. I bet Hasatan told them the same thing he told Adam. You can be like God. God had a son. And without Controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. The difference is this. God was 100% God and 100% man. Or rather, God was 50% God, 50% man. But I think you know what I mean. The angels could only do 50-50. So God was 100% God, but also 100% man. That's the one thing we find about the Bible all the time, is that two seemingly unyoked ideas can actually coexist. They can exist at the same time. You can both have free will and be divinely appointed. You know, you can have both a hedge around you, my God, but also you can be being tested at the same time. That's a very long story. Giants and flood evidence in every country on earth and all they ever do is hide the truth so that they can hide the knowledge of God. The only angels that were judged early and locked in hell were the ones that came and did that with humans. Book of Jude, and we're quoting Enoch. We really don't know much of anything. We need God daily. I know I do. I see we are no match fighting in the fashion of this world. Resist the devil through prayer. Let God deal with him. You just shine a light, report the truth, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Have no fear. We're not given the spirit of fear. We are God's watchmen here on earth. We are in the army of God. God has called the frogs again into this late age, this late time. God's paradigms are for our thick heads and hard hearts, it says here. Break up the fallow ground of your hearts. We need a goodly soil for God's word. Learning detail about your armor. This is not a game. Read the Bible because it will change you from within. The word will occupy you and you will become like unto, like unto what God says we are, adoption into sonship. So yeah, um, it's very special to actually come across a little bit of scripture and a real genuine Christian message on a platform that is generally, generally, um, as I've discovered, pretty new agey. But here's something very interesting, which was uh, information relating to the appearance. And I've seen this before many times on all the 36 patterns where we see the, the uh, Lucifer and the rest of that word, A-S-E, this is a dye, a chemical uh, bonding. And um, basically it's called a reporter protein that is able to uh, not only traverse the bloodstream, but it also includes a cationic peptide or a polypeptide, such as, but not limited to, polylysine polyomethine and or polyarginine <laughs> and uh yeah there's uh, there's a lot in this in this and from the 36 patents this is probably the one that's most well known this is the one that's very evidently got the triple six at the very top in its name header but all the other 35 patents all have the triple six number in them as well if you do a bit of research you'll see that they are all guilty of carrying the Suetonius mark and the triple six number, as well as the name of the beast. So um, this is what we're dealing with. 
and again information pertinent to the turn on of 5G in China. Uh, but yeah, as I as I sort of keep going, the more I realize that we genuinely are living in the end times. And uh, as it says here, buckle up because some seriously hectic stuff's coming. And um, hey, you know, we're going to have to do everything in our power to stay in the word, to stay in prayer and let God, let God genuinely work miracles in our lives. So brothers and sisters, I'm praying that each and every single one of you comes to know all of the mysteries that unfold biblically, um, that are unfolding every single day. You know, I get very excited seeing that we are very much in the end times and that one of these evenings or days, we're going to hear the trumpets blow at the last trump. And we're going to hear the trumpet, the shout, the cry of command, the voice of the archangel. And then we will be caught up. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive and left shall be caught up to meet with them in the clouds to be with our Lord forever more. So yeah, hmm. very, very interesting. It's been, it's been a very, very interesting journey filled with just about everything and anything you dream of is a deception. And um, we're seeing a complete reversal of values. We're seeing, you know, this determination on behalf of government to hold on to the stocks and carries from all over the world, not allowing resources to get into harbors, to get onto shelves. And it's almost as if, I mean, nobody can do this resiliently, sustainably for another year or two. There's just no way that that's going to happen. So what do you think is going to happen? I mean, genuinely, what do you think is going to happen? I've had visions of where we're going, where we're headed. Uh, I had a rapture dream, one rapture dream. I kept praying for a rapture dream for quite a while. And one morning I woke up and... It was like about four or five, six minutes into being awake when I realized, hey, that was actually a rapture dream. That was my first rapture dream. And um, and, it, and it made me realize that, you know, I had, I too, for many, many, many weeks, I'd asked for a rapture dream and I got one. So I know it's coming. I know it's genuine. I know we have it, uh, even biblically, from a biblical perspective, if you've read John Wolford's book, uh, if you've read, uh, if you've watched all 60 hours of Andy Woods, if you've um, gone deeply into all of the other books that have been written on the rapture, and there's so many very good ones. Uh, I read Heaven by Randy Alcorn, and I can tell you there is a rapture. I, I don't know why some Christians are determined not to want to believe it, but I go, I always say, you know, each unto their own faith. If you don't believe, you're going to get what you don't believe. You're actually going to get that. You, you're not going to make it. You're not going to. You're not going to go on the rapture. And when I tell some of these lost Christians, you know, I'm not sure they really are Christians, but you know, these people that want to argue all the time about about everything, uh, it makes me realize that maybe they just don't get it. They. You know, they just determined, they are determined to go through the tribulation. I always say, if you, if you really want to go through the tribulation, you're welcome. You know, God's listening to this conversation. Um, many don't back out. But now and again, there's one or two that goes, you know, I, I, none of us really know. And I'm like, no, no, we do know. We, I have the Holy Spirit. I know there's a rapture. So I don't know who, what you're listening to, but I know there's a rapture. The mark of the beast in transhumanism. I've been stuck on the question for years. And it literally just came to my, uh, to me like an epiphany. <coughs> in the right hand and in the forehead, in the actions and mind. That's why everything is connected to the beast. Lucifer Ace in gene editing. The were Bill Gates uh, patent going along with the V. Everything Elon 
is working on right now with Neuralink. Right, Sky, I always call it Skynet, but it's actually Neuralink. They want to make humans into robots that can be controlled by radio waves, cell towers. Right? How stupid is that? Can you, can you believe the elite want to turn human beings into androids? You know, so that they're controlled, like in Metropolis, the movie. Hence the 5G rollout at lockdown. We're seeing, right now, in the last generation, we're seeing the end of the human race as we know it, if this is to be allowed to continue. But of course, God wants it to continue. God doesn't have a problem with it continuing, because he wants to prove to humanity that under Lucifer, under evil, the ultimate evil, the most evil thing that you can possibly imagine, that under what humanity will degenerate into, evil, this is what happens to the human race. It gets wiped out. God can't have this go any other way. This is not going to go, it's not going to go right. It's one of the reasons why at this very critical time, historically, we can't become combatants against those in power because they're, they're anointed, they're ordained by God. The most evil people that are in power right now, from, you know, the, the Chinese head um, of the, the party to, uh, oh man, you know, from Merkel to Andrews, all, all the people worldwide that are in on this, you know, they're all, they have all been put into place by God. They've been allowed to go into place by God. You've got to understand how God is, how God works. I never understood that. I always used to think there's no way God would allow any form of evil, but evil just seems to. But no, that's not how it works. God purposefully allows evil. He, he allows it so that human beings get the message. We can't do this life on our own. We can't do the world on our own. We can't live in this world trying to do it on our own. I was having a wrestle this morning with God because I kept saying, God, Father in heaven, really, you know, um, we're living here on earth under tyrants, you know, under a tyrannical force called Lucifer. But what is it that we have to look forward to? And it's like, well, we have the clouds to look forward to. We have heaven, all of the goodness of God, living waters, you know, the glory of Jesus in heaven, the new Jerusalem, uh, a thousand year millennial kingdom uh, where we can actually see Jesus Christ roaming the gardens and teaching the Torah and doing all of those beautiful things. And, um, you know, and we also then have to look forward to a new heaven, new earth and no more tears at that point. No more tears then. So I'm thinking in that thousand years, we're going to be we're going to be trying, we're going to be in court most of the time trying to get back those members who were abominated, who took the abomination, who were misled, who were deceived. We're going to be constantly trying to win them back to the kingdom, right? That's what the thousand years are going to be for. And, you know, and I said to God, I don't want to, I don't want to be held ransom, Father, for a thousand years. Please, you got to understand, um, we're weary, we're tired, you know, we're waiting. We're waiting on our bridegroom. We're waiting on Jesus Christ to come for us. It's hard. It hasn't been easy. Everybody has been struggling with this, you know. We are dealing with a situation where we are overwhelmed. And um, how long are you going to take, my dear Father in heaven? Please, Father. <laughs> Please, come. Come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. You know, um, well, going back to this little article, just to accept, not fear or question, AI is evil. And the reason for Meta, Metaf, and others blocking out truth so successfully. This is a new age of deception that we're experiencing. Everything connects. The mark of the beast isn't one thing. One abomination, one implant. Although for some, that may be enough. It's through transhumanism, transforming the human to the point that he cannot differentiate good and evil. And when the person cannot control their own self, that's when they are marked, according to this article. 
Yeah, you know, it all makes sense from the perspective of, I always remember speaking to a lot of my clients and always saying to them, you know, what's the secret of your success? And almost invariably, every single person would say, it's not one thing, it's many things. It's many things working in conjunction to create the secret, the secret herbs and spices that make what it is that we do right. And I know this, even from my own companies and businesses, the things that I do, you know, I do things in combinations and I realize that it's in doing things in combinations in a very specific way, you know, um, like a recipe that you actually are able to achieve things that you would not normally have been able to achieve and to have a very strikingly different taste and flavor. Okay, that's all the news I have for today. 